Hey everyone, Night Haro here, and today I want to talk about what I think is the biggest misconception in in-game raiding. And for those of you who have watched some of my other videos, that you know that the main thing that I personally try to do in all my videos is I'm trying to, to teach and, and uh, educate people, but but with a purpose of, of helping people get into in-game. That's been my goal for, for quite a while, and it's for the foreseeable future, uh, until we get a lot more people into in-game, that's still what I'm working on. So what is the biggest misconception in in-game? I would say that it is that optimization, specifically raid group optimization, is for people who are like super try hard, super sweaty, uh, for those who take the game way too seriously, who regard it as a job, however you want to say it. I've, I've heard all kinds of things uh, said about this, but the, the main core idea is that people seem to think that, you know, optimizing your raid group is just, it's just too, it's just too much too much for whatever reason. And I'm here to tell you that while, uh, you know, I, I get it, I get it that some of this stuff can seem way too intense and stuff like that. I, I don't think it has to, I really don't. And I, and I don't think it is that complicated. So, um, it, I mean, it can be, uh, <laughs> certainly it can be. Um, but just to get a, a kind of d good enough situation, a good enough setup for you and your team, I don't think it is. And, um, Part of what I want to show you here is I want to present something. I've made a tool to make it easier, hopefully. Uh, now, the tool looks might look a little crazy, might look a little insane. It is a spreadsheet. Um, but, I again, you know, it's fairly simple and fairly straightforward. So, what I want to do in this video, though, is I just want to convince you on why it, it's a big deal and why it's important. So when you go into a trial, the thing is that you have, you've got 12 people, right? And, uh, and you're all heading towards one goal. Well, the way ESO works and a lot of the sets work is there's a lot of things you can do to buff everybody else in the group. And when you have 12 potential spots that could be buffing other people in the group, you end up with a lot of synergies. You end up, and, and I don't mean like, press X synergies. I mean, uh, there's a lot of, there's a lot of synergies go on where, you know, one person increasing everybody else's DPS and several people doing that ends up with a, with a pretty huge DPS increase. And the reason that, that that is important is because it makes trials easier and it makes them much easier in a lot of situations. So the reason that, that having more DPS makes trials easier is you have to go through far fewer mechanics, okay? So if you had to go through the same mechanics three times, maybe you only have to go through it twice now. And whenever the mechanic is, is fairly difficult, that's a huge deal. There are also situations where there's just a hard DPS check or, or even a soft one like in Veteran Sunspire, where if you don't have, if the group together doesn't have some amount of DPS, some number, you know, you go in with a group and if you're almost there, if you're on the cusp, but you get a second set of atros, it's usually a wipe for the group. Because if you can't get the dragon up that fast enough to, to avoid that second set of atros, probably you don't have the DPS to kill those atros quickly and then th that's just you know the first phase and then you've got two more phases and eventually your tank is going to have too many atros and you're gonna you know it's going to cause the, the party to wipe so um so that's just that's just one example of uh, of the situation like that there are plenty more if you have a high enough dps you can kind of ignore a lot of mechanics in eso um and again just not having to go through them often another thing that i see quite often is that when you have low dps it is very hard on your supports. They have to they have to keep going and keep doing the same thing over and over again and not make any mistakes for, you know, a lot longer, <laughs> you know, tens of minutes, right? If you're a tank or you're a healer and you can't make a mistake for 10 minutes in a row, um, it's, it's difficult. It's mentally taxing and the chances that you're going to screw up, miss a block or do something else that's going to end up getting you killed or close to killed is pretty high. Or making it where then the, the, the healer needs to, you know, uh, come in and save the day. So then that's more stressful on the healer. So all of that to say that the whole point is to make it easier on the group and make it easier and, and make trials more accessible. Now, you could argue that, you know, we need to do away with all this stuff. Trials or veteran trials are just too hard or whatever. I personally don't think that's the case. I think they're in a really good spot um, in general. Uh, there's some stuff, you know, that could always be tweaked or whatever. However, I'm hoping after after this video and maybe the next that uh, I'll have convinced you of this. So uh, to do that, I, I made something. Um, let's go ahead and look, take a look at it now. So I've already recorded this video once, and then I got some more information from Evie over at the Hive Mind. And uh, she actually did a run where they did Hellroth Citadel twice. And the first 
run, they had all the supports in selfish sets. So all the supports were wearing sets that didn't help the group, you know, Mighty Chudan, um, Plague Doctor, that kind of thing. And then the second second run, they ran sets that, that increased the group, you know, DPS. So you put on things like Yolnikrin, Spellpower Cure, those kind of things. It ended up being, so the first run they had, and I'll pull it up here, uh, the group DPS on the last boss, the Warrior, was 206,000 total group DPS. And then on the second run, when they had group buffs and everything going on, it went up by 70,000. So <laughs> it was a third, a little over a third of a DPS increase, which is pretty huge, right? If you can increase your, your entire group DPS by a third, um, kind of insane. It's kind of like adding two and a half people, almost three people to your group. And that's kind of what I what I've done here in a theoretical way is to kind of try to show you that if you add, if you can add a few group buffs and and you know a lot of times uh most groups that i see healers and tanks even in discords they'll have to have like 10 sets 15 sets a, a lot of sets um maybe even more just to get different ranks and just to be able to to you know progress in the guild and the dps just have to have a parse that's all they have to have now i get that dps can be difficult and everything like that however uh, what I want to show you today is if, if you can have the DPS in in buff sets, some of them, you can really increase the group DPS for everyone. So here, uh, looking at Elemental Catalyst, for example. Now, there are some caveats to this. Elemental Catalyst and uh, Minor Brittle both increase your critical damage. So if you're above the cap, these aren't going to do something for you. They're not going to do anything for you. So, uh, you know, these only increase the damage if you're below that cap. Now, in the next video, I'm going to go over calculating that I, I have a spreadsheet that does it for you. you don't have to do anything um but just realize that that if you are going over these sets aren't going to do anything for you, at least these two however uh zen's redress and making sure you're at penetration cap are also still going to be hugely important so here i've I, i've set up a sheet and i've said okay what if we have everybody with forty thousand dps okay and this is kind of theoretical this is not necessarily in content um this is what you do on a dummy so just kind of walking through this, I'll try to be quick. So we have 40,000 DPS. We're assuming eight eight people in the group that are DPSing. So we end up with a group DPS of 320,000. Now, if we assume that we have uh, we have kind of two uptimes here, one is on the lower side, 66%. I think it's a reasonable uptime for Elemental Catalyst, kind of averaged out between all three t damage types. Um, and then if we assume about a 65% crit, I, again, I try to choose conservative numbers here. Your group might have more than that, and things might change in the future where crit is higher or lower than it is now. Then you end up with effectively, you know, 43% of the time you're actually getting the buff in one situation. In the situation situation where you have higher up times you end up with almost a 60 percent so you know a fair amount different there and then our crit damage multiplier is just it, that's just what you get from elemental catalyst again it's five percent for each type of damage as you can see here uh with the set but we're just kind of averaging it all together and the whole point of, of all of this is supposed to be a, a back of the napkin calculation to give you a rough idea i'm trying to sell you on the idea of raid group optimization so uh what we end up here with in one situation is a twenty thousand uh dps increase and the other is almost a 30 so 28 uh 28 000. now looking over at zen's redress now this set increases your damage taken uh, on a particular target based on how many dots they have on them up to five percent so up up to five dots it's one percent for each dot up to five and uh and here if you know if we assume a fairly low uptime 70 percent, and then i compared it to a higher uptime so you can see not only is it you know what does it do if you have it in the group and then what does it do if you have better uptimes what can you do for your group and so you end up here at 11,000 and 15,000 uh, respectively now looking at minor brittle we kind of have the same situation as elemental catalyst because they work very similar they both just increase our crit damage and uh and i went with a 60 percent uh, uptime then a 90 percent uptime time i will say with minor brittle it's it's depending on your setup it's not too hard to get in the 80s 85 is is pretty reasonable so i don't think 90s is out of control at all but again even going with the conservative number we're looking at about 12,000 uh dps increase and uh with higher up to 90 we end up with about 18,000 almost 19,000 damage increase now penetration um so kind of talking about these all these different sets uh, most of these uh, damage increases are additive. So you kind of have your base number, like your white damage, uh, if you can consider that. And then, and then whatever damage increase you're getting, you kind of, you kind of 
uh, it is based off this white damage, but then you just add it. So, so if you're adding 3%, you would take this base white damage. That's your base. Then you also take base damage over here, multiply it by 5% or 3%. And, uh, and you're going to get a very, you know, fairly small number, in theory, the numbers I have here, and then you add that to your white damage. So that's how that works. Now, penetration is a little bit different. Penetration actually affects that white damage. So if penetration is low, um, what all these other buffs are going to be getting, you know, the, the damage increase from them is going to be affected by that original, that, that one white damage number uh, over here. And so... Because of that, penetration becomes kind of one of the most important things. I'm not going to say it's the most important, but generally speaking, it's one of the most important. And it's also very easy to get up to, without too much difficulty, to get up to cap. Um, again, I have a calculator on the other page, so we're going to look at that in the next video, and I'll show you how to, how to kind of work with that. Um, but assuming that you are underpenetrating, which many groups are, um, you can end up with a huge, huge uh, a damage decrease. Now, the amount of underpenetration I'm showing here, I'm showing two different, you know, one's very high, one's very low. One, we're under uh, 4,500. The other one, we're only under 1,000. Now, I think being under 1,000 is probably very, very common for most groups, unless everybody's in light armor, um, in which case you're going to be losing about 7,000. DPS per uh, total group DPS. If you are just way underpinning because no one is paying attention to it and no one's doing the right things, nobody's in, uh, most of the group isn't in light armor, you end up almost under, you know, almost under 30,000. So that's pretty huge. Um, so just to kind of give you an idea, again, to try to sell you on this idea, if you have a group that's not optimized at all and you've never looked at this stuff, you've never kind of bothered with it, um, you can end up having a group that has you know, less than this, you know, even if everybody individually parses 40,000, if you're in a group and everything's not optimized, you could end up losing about 30,000, which is what we get in here from our penetration. And, uh, you know, if you compare that to having high buff up times, kind of more ideal situation, which is reasonable um, with most of these things, you end up with 115,000, 114 and some change difference in DPS, extra DPS that you're kind of leaving on the table. So if we're thinking about a, a 300 and 20,000 uh, damage basis, you can see here we're in that kind of that same situation where we're a little over a third damage increase, just like we actually saw from logs <laughs> when you had groups, you know, running buff sets as opposed to not running buff sets. And that was actually mainly with the supports from, from my understanding. There was a problem with some of the logs and they didn't actually save the gear. Uh, it's not showing any gear for some of them. I had to double check. I was like, you guys didn't do a naked run, did you? And she was like, no, uh, that's not what happened. So um, so the, the logs did something screwy here. So my point in all this is that if you can get a DPS to where Zen's, and typically that would go on a, a DK, if, if you get a set, you know, for a, uh, a, a Zen's, you know, usually put that on a DK, so a Zen's DK, and if you get a Necromancer, usually wears uh, Elemental Catalyst, because it's very easy for them, they have all three types of damage, so it's not too hard for them to do anything with that, they don't have to change their setup very much, it's literally remorphed like one skill from what their maximum damage would be to their buff set damage and same thing with minor brittle for a warden a warden can very easily keep up minor brittle and you can also there's also some other things you can do supports can help with minor brittle but if you have a warden they can get you that 90 percent up time without too much work um with with a brittle setup so and then the last thing is you know penetration um generally now i i think it's a little bit better currently to have most of your dps in at least five pieces of medium armor on their body and if you do that though you're going to end up under penetrating and so i recommend having a dps in alkosh as opposed to a tank um, because it gives a, it gives almost twice the value if you have it on a dps and that's you know that you're going to see in the other video again i'm going to give you a basic setup for why that's good but you know looking at these numbers you you can really see that hey if i can increase our dps by a third and each one of the DPS wearing these different sets, whether it's having a, uh, a, a Brittleden, whether it's having an EC Crow, whether it's having a Zen's DK, whether it's having pretty much any DPS in, in Alkosh, if you, if you just simply do that, they're not going to lose 
hardly any damage. They might lose a few K, but in all situations, and this is what you have to test in if you have a set that buffs the group is, you know, how much does the person lose? How much does the group gain? You know, if, 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 if those numbers are, uh, you know, if the person loses more damage than the group is gaining, you don't want to wear that set, obviously. Uh, but if it's not the case, then you do want to have that set in group. Absolutely. I will talk more about the details of that. But my point here is just that this is free damage and this damage can help you get through content. So if you increase your damage by a third and you're close, you were close to getting Yolnokrin down on Inveter and Sunspire, I promise you, you're going to be able to get them down with this if you were at all close, you know, increasing your DPS by a third is going to be huge. So um, anyways, that's it for this video. I feel like I'm underselling it, um, but hopefully in the next one, maybe I can make up for that and sell it a little bit harder. But uh, the thing is about all this stuff is that it, it is more important for groups that are unoptimized, groups that are newer to trials. Because if you go into a trial and, and everybody in the group can parse 100k, it doesn't matter what anybody's wearing. You're going to have enough DPS, okay? If you go in and you have a group that, you know, maybe needs a little bit work. Maybe they're wearing, you know, meta DPS uh, gear from like three patches ago. So now it, it, it doesn't do the most damage compared to everything else. Or maybe they, you know, everybody plays casually and, and just DPS is just lower. If, if you stick those same casual people in buff sets uh, and they help the group, you can get through more content and it makes it a lot easier. And I think far too many times you have groups that are newer that are going into content and they're not super prepared for it and they don't know what to what to wear what to use and and they find the task difficult to impossible and i think it prevents a lot of people from getting into end game and that's that's what we want to prevent here we want to get more people in not less so um hopefully i sold you on this video uh if if i haven't quite got there yet or you're not really sure or if you just want to learn more check out the next video in the series and uh and we're going to go through the front front page of the spreadsheet and kind of talk about everything and talk more about how to actually do raid group optimization now i will note in all my videos uh, i try my best to do this i'm going to give you just a simple setup and say hey if I'm just going to recommend something, this is it. Run this. I'm going to start out. I'm going to do that for you, okay? So if you don't want to listen to the rest of the spreadsheet, you just want to go, you know, you're sold by this, but you're like, well, what do I what do I wear? What do I use in my group? Uh, what do I ask people to wear? I'm going to go over that at the beginning of the next video. So we'll see you there. <laughs>